Swifty Game Meisters, it's Professor Gallagher, and we are about to build the user interface for our Dungeon Dice app, with the caveat that what we'll end up with at the end of this lesson will very much be more code than we'll eventually end up with at the end of the series. But this is going to set us up for our next lectures, where we refactor while learning lots of new Swift UI techniques. Now we'll start by solving the challenge from our previous enums lesson, and we'll use that code directly in this app. So let's code! And if you're filled with anticipation, just to let you know, at the end of this app, we'll have a working Dungeon Dice app where you can click on any of these buttons and get a random value associated with the roll of that type of dice. So we'll open a new playground in Xcode and call this Dungeon Dice Challenge. And as a reminder, here was our prior challenge from the earlier lesson. Create an enum called Dice. There should be a case and value for all seven types of dice that you would use in Dungeons and Dragons. And the enum should include a method called roll that returns a random value appropriate when rolling that dice. Now let's look at a solution. We'll create an enum with enum dice capital D. And since this will include a raw value for a dice roll, those will be int values. So we'll add colon int, open and close curlies, and then we'll add a case and raw value for all seven types of dice. That will be case four, the word four, equals four, the integer four, then case six equals six, case eight equals eight, case 10 equals 10, case 12 equals 12, case 20 equals 20, and we'll say case 100 equals 100. And just quickly below this, I'm gonna enter a shift enter to execute the code in the simulator. Nothing's gonna show up on the console, but what this does is it resets code completion so it recognizes the enum. Otherwise, I find Swift Playground is a little slow to recognize the type I just created. And now let's write our roll method. We're gonna do that inside the closing curly of our dice enum, and we'll say func, lowercase roll, open and close parens, we're not passing any values in here. Then I'll add a dash greater than symbol because we're gonna return a value and that's gonna be an int. And open and close curlies. Now we're gonna return the results of a simple one line of code. We'll say return, and then we wanna get a random value. So we're gonna say int dot random, open parentheses, select the option within, and we wanna get a random from one dot 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 in the range through the last value of whatever case we're working with. So we'll say self dot raw value, and that's it. Now we can try this out a couple of different ways. One is by creating a value that's of type dice. So why don't we do that first? I'll say let 20 sided equals capital D dice dot 20. So now my 20 sided constant is a dice type with the case value 20 and a raw value of the integer 20. Then below we can say print, you rolled a string interp on a string interp sided dice. In the first string interp we'll say 20 sided dot roll. Code completion puts in the parens. And the second string interp will just say 20 sided. Shift return, and look at that down below. I rolled a seven on a 20-sided dice. Cool. Now, even though we created a constant in the example above, we didn't even need to do that. It's okay to directly reference the enum type itself. Let me show you how. We'll copy and paste that print line. Then why don't we roll a 100-sided dice here? So I can replace 20-sided in the first string interp with capital D dice dot 100 with a dot roll method still after that. And also in that second string interp, I'll replace 20 sided with capital D dice dot 100, shift return to execute our code. And look at that, I rolled a 12 on a 100 sided dice. I'll press the square and play a couple of times until I get a nice big number to verify that I am rolling a 100 sided dice. And there we go. In this example, I rolled a 76 on a 100 sided dice. Nice. So now we're ready to create the user interface for dungeon dice, and we'll use the enum we just wrote in that app. Now we'll have a working app at the end of this lesson, but we'll also have an app that we can greatly improve in future lessons while we learn important additional Swift UI techniques. So to create a new project, I'll head up to the file menu, select new project. This is our standard iOS app. I'll call this app Dungeon Dice. Click next. Make sure we create a Git repository. I'll save mine to the desktop. Click create. And I'll expand Xcode, close my navigator and inspector panes, and adjust my preview canvas view. Now let's grab the enum code that we just wrote. So I'm going to command accent mark to flip back to the playground we were just working on, highlight and copy the entire enum through the close and curly brace, command C to copy, command accent mark to get back to the project, and I'm going to paste this in right after the struct definition, but before the body property declaration. And there it is. This enum is now available for use anywhere inside of this struct. Now let's lay out our app. We'll start with some static text declaring the app name Dungeon Dice in large bold red letters. So I'll delete the image in the vStack. We don't need that. I'm going to change the text string to Dungeon Dice. I'll add a font modifier passing in large title. I'll add a font weight modifier passing in black and a foreground color of dot red. Then let's push the text view to the top by putting a spacer below it. And if you've been following along with the prior lessons, you should be very familiar with all these techniques. 
Now below this, we're gonna add another text field. This is gonna show the results of our role. Right now, let's put a placeholder string in here. How about role message here? And I'll also modify this with font large title, font weight medium, and I'll set a frame around this for a height of 150 just to keep all of our message text inside a view of that size. Then I'll add a spacer down below to push this message to the middle of our screen. And instead of the string I put in here, why don't we change that to the type of message we're actually gonna be displaying in a running app. So we'll replace roll message here with, how about you rolled a string interp on a string interp sided dice. And in the first string interp, we can put in capital D dice dot hundred dot roll. That'll give us our random dice roll. And in the second string interp, let's put in dice dot hundred dot raw value to return the int containing the number of sides of that dice. In this case, that's gonna be the number 100. And we see the preview. For me, it's randomly rolled in 95. Looks good, but I see the lines are left justified. I want my text to be center aligned. But in an earlier lesson, we learned how to fix this. We'll just add a multi-line text alignment modifier below the text, passing in the value dot center. And things are centered. Nice. Now here's another thing that I noticed. In the playground, we were able to pass dice.100 into a string interp, but for some reason we can't do the same thing in an Xcode project. I did notice when I was experimenting with this that Xcode was asking me to submit a bug report, so this might be a bug, but even though Xcode says this is an error, it does offer to fix this by adding a raw value. And again, just to show you, this exact same code was allowed to run in the playground back here, but in our project, I'm just gonna add dot raw value back in after dice.100. This is gonna show the number instead of the name 100, and that's just fine. And below the space or below the text, why don't we create our first button, and we'll select the button option with title and action. Let's make our first button the four-sided dice button. So for the title value, in between quotes, I'll enter string interp, then capital D dice dot four dot raw value. Then after the string interp, but still inside the string, I'll put in dash sided. Tab over to the action, press return to get the trailing closure format I like so much. And inside the button action, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna update the value of whatever variable is holding the current message inside of this text view. So why don't we highlight everything that's inside of this text view and cut it out with a command X. Then we're gonna need to create a variable to hold the string inside of this text view. We'll do that up top, what we usually do just before we declare our body property. We'll say at state private var, why don't we call this variable result message, lower camel case, and we'll initially set this equal to an empty string. Then in our second text view, we can pass the result message inside of the parens. And in the button message, when we click this button, we want to set result message, setting an equal to, and then I'm going to paste in that string that we cut out earlier, but I'm going to change dice.100 to dice.4 in both the string and terps. Then let's make our button look a little bit nicer. We'll add a button style of border prominent and a tint of red, and you can click away at this button and you're rolling a four-sided dice. Nice. Now here's where we're gonna finish the app interface, but we're gonna write more code than we need to, so we'll fix this in subsequent lessons and learn some new Swift UI skills. Now if we look at the app design we're trying to create, we see that we're laying this out with three rows of buttons, two rows of three buttons, and one button centered in the third row. Well, we know that we can create an H stack to align buttons horizontally, so let's do that to create our first row. If I command click on the button, I can select embed an H stack from the quick actions menu. And since I'm about to paste in two more buttons, all three of those buttons are gonna have the same button modifiers. So I'm gonna highlight these modifiers, cut them out, paste them at the bottom of the H stack so they modify all the buttons inside the H stack. Then I'll highlight this first button code, paste it in twice, then put spacers in between these three buttons, and I'll change the second button so that it refers to dice.6, and the third button so it refers to dice.8. Then I have to resume my paused preview, and the buttons look good, but if I try them out, I can see that I'm only showing random values from one through four. Oh yeah, I missed updating the first string interp in the strings inside the button actions. I'll fix those, and now things are looking good. And since I'm going to be copying and pasting some code, I'm going to remove the spaces between the buttons and the spacers just so that I can see more code on screen. And for some reason, Xcode continues to misalign the modifiers below the H stack. I'll highlight the area that's misaligned and control I to fix the indentation. And now I'm going to add another H stack. Although I'm going to group all of my buttons together within all of the H stacks inside of a group. So I'm gonna command click on H stack, select group. Now there's a group view outside of my H stack. 
we see Xcode continues to misindent the modifiers after the embed, but I'm just going to cut the modifiers out of the H stack. I'm going to paste them after the group since I'm going to be modifying all the buttons inside of this group. Then I'm going to highlight the first H stack, copy it, paste it down below that first H stack, but still inside the group. Preview shows me two rows of buttons. And since I want one more button for my seventh button, I'm going to highlight this button code here, copy it and paste it outside the last H stack, but still inside the group. Now I've got seven buttons. I'm going to change my seventh button to die.100, remembering to change this in three spots this time. Then I'm going to change the values in the second H stack so that they refer to dice.10, dice.12, and dice.20. And we can try this out in the preview, and all buttons look like they're working great. Congratulations, you've got a working Dungeon Dice app. I'll fix the indentations again with Command A and Control I, but you know, when we take a look at these buttons, we can see that we violate our dry, our don't repeat yourself principle. We've got a lot of code that looks almost identical. The only difference seems to be the dice case we're using inside of the button code. Well, we're going to be able to fix this by using a special Swift UI command named for each. Now that's different from the for in statement we worked with previously, but it works kind of like the for in statement, but it's specifically for Swift UI views. This is going to create a bunch of buttons, but then we need to figure out how to lay them out in a grid like this. And we'll learn how to do that when we learn about lazy grids in Swift UI. We're also going to learn that lazy grids can't easily place a button centered. It's going to always want to left justify things but we'll learn to write a workaround for this as well. We'll also learn some advanced skills on how we should be better organizing our code. And when we do this, we're also gonna learn about passing values in between views using bindings. Keep at it, Swifter. There's more big learning to come.